What's up guys, Goro here and welcome back to another draft video on the channel where today we are back. Draft objectives are in full flow for the final part of FC24 and I think SBC cards are in draft. We're going to check out today to see if they are, see how things go and hopefully try and complete a few of the brand new objectives that we got recently. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to leave the video, like, rating, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and with that being said... Let's get into the draft. And so just before we get into actual drafting for today, as I say, we have the brand new objective that has came out for us, which is preseason draft play. Now, sadly, there is no bonus like rewards for FC25 content. We will talk about this because there's a f I'm for and against this. There's some good sides to this objective and there's some bad sides to it. But um, what we are uh, basically getting is packs along with Ferland Mendy and Cole Palmer, for basically just winning eight games a draft, playing 10 games, um, and that's all that you really need to do. So obviously you need to win five either, or oh sorry, you actually need to win eight either online or offline, and then you need to win eight online. Um, even if you take eight drafts to do it, it's great. You get free draft tokens for just logging into the game. For playing one game in any game mode, you get a free draft token. And for playing one game in draft, you get a free draft token. So even if you're not really too bothered about like actual rewards, you're going to get a few bits along with the fact that there's going to be the daily SBC. It's an 82 rated team for a draft token, which is super easy to complete, obviously, with the end game grind now. But we are going to see how we can get on today in a draft. Now, I don't know if we're going to do gameplay or not. Part of me thinks yes, because this is a great sort of thing to do gameplay on because... It actually gives you a reason to play draft right now. However, at the same time, in the three games that I've played so far, I've got all the way through to the final, lost in the final, so I wasn't really too bothered. But um, in the sort of the three, four games that I played, two people put the controller down. And for me, that just makes draft a little bit boring. And people are just obviously getting the play objectives, getting a few easy bits done, and then that's it. They're not really too bothered. However, some people just want to play the draft and get it done. And there will also be people who will not play this draft because obviously you don't get any rewards in FC25. It makes zero sense why EA at the end of the game basically aren't giving you a reason to sort of claim stuff in the next game cycle. I don't really get it. Um, Kanu, one of the brand new SPC cards, is in draft now. So obviously you can get SPC cards. Maybe this week we'll do some sort of the most SBC cards in a draft or just an SBC draft. We take every SBC card and use them. I don't know. We'll see how things go. But as I was saying, um, it just, there's no actual reason to kind of continue playing the draft. And a lot of people aren't going to complete this. Now, purely because I like to do draft and I like to do draft content, I'm going to be doing this objective. It gives me a reason to play. I haven't actually touched the game in terms of gameplay for about two weeks at a minimum. Probably actually about five weeks in all honesty, but it just gives me an actual reason to log on to the game, give it a go, see if anything's half decent. If it's great, good. If it's not, then I'll just sort of leave it and walk away. But yeah, now that there's an incentive for me, it's great. But hey, help. it is what it is. Now, in terms of um, this draft, it's actually going pretty well. There seems to be a brand new set of rotation in terms of cards. You don't normally see that DeMarco. This 93 striker in Rodriguez, you never normally see. We did see Yashin as well. He's not been in rotation for a while. I haven't ever seen that Sanchez before. We do get either Scott or Ribery. We're obviously going to take Ribery. There is no doubt about it. He's actually going to go in instead of Leon Bailey because Rodriguez can go to there and Ribery goes in there. It's full chemistry because everybody that we're using starts on full chemistry apart from gay heat but obviously we've got the icons there um, and the league and nation links with that the king we've got a brand new sbc card in draft in tim cahill which is great so this could possibly mean that oh my word um kai havertz i've not really seen this card either i think because of the fact that we've got two well we've got 397s already plus the two that are here we're going to take kai havertz to go to midfield because this will lead us on to another topic in a second. Uh, we'll probably talk about this in the next draft. But yeah, there's um, some really new cards that I guess also because there's SBC cards as well. If you haven't got the SBC yet or you didn't get the SBC, it gives you a good reason to play with them. 
EA obviously giving you incentive to play in this game cycle. I understand why they're doing it, but I don't think it's a strong enough pull. I don't think it's the best thing that they could have done. And there we go. Another SBC card, 99 Eusebio, which is fantastic. Now, Tim Cahill can actually play as a centre mid, which is even better. So he's going to go down there and play in that role. Osario can come on to the bench for Bailey. Now, in terms of a goalkeeper... We will take 94 herbs. That is very nice. We are currently on a 1 to 8 as it stands. It's got room for the potential of a 1 to 9 if Fernando Morientes could do something for us. Now, he can go into the team because he will replace Gehi. He can go into there. Ribery can go into that left mid roll. Gehi can go onto the bench instead of Puskas. And that is still a 1 to 18. So, if you are playing draft. This is a really good option to, you know, test out that 99 Eusebio if you want him. If you're not sort of playing the game too much, it's a good way to obviously test the cards. Um, or if you're not completely grinding the menus. But, I mean, it's a really good team. The rating's super high. And the rating is something we're going to talk about in the next draft. Because there's been a few discoveries over the last few days and weeks about how to get actual high rated in draft. So let's get into another draft and see how well we can do in it. So then, before we get into game number two, just a quick little thing to show you of what I was kind of just saying about. We are in the first round of the draft. I thought, you know what, whilst the objective's on, I may as well play a game. May as well even just work towards one game. It will help us out. However, it's 4-1 up, and we've had half time. This was before half time. This guy put the controller down. But, yeah, this is what gameplay is like right now. To a point of... I want to quit this game because it's more boring and more time consuming to stay in this type of game than it is to even stay in a game that, again, will be 90 minutes long, but at least the opponent will play it. So, yeah, if you're looking to do this draft objective, you might think, okay, yeah, well, 10 games or sort of eight games like this, 10 games to play, dead easy. You know, you won't have to do too much within sort of four drafts. It'll be all right. Now, thankfully... This can happen as well. That 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 is perfect timing. I could not have timed this any better. But that is why it's sometimes worth staying in the games and why some of you guys will stay in them just in case your opponent does decide to, you know, well, not rage quit, but obviously not keep hold of the controller and disconnect. But yeah, a 4-1 win in the first round with this team. I'm going to see if I can get any further with it, but I might just quit out the next game. We'll get into the next draft. But it will mean at the end of the video, we'll have hopefully a lot of the objectives from the packs to see if we can get anything good. So let's get into draft number two. So then we got an extra little rage quit to get to round two. So that's two extra wins for us, plus another two games played. So obviously there's some bonus rewards for us to open. I'd say we'll open all these packs at the end and see if we can get anything good out of them. But into draft number two and the topic of conversation we need to talk about as well today is how draft rating works. So supposedly over the last week there's been a few discoveries and a few people sort of clearly bored with the game and trying to work out how the rating actually works in draft but supposedly it is sometimes better off not necessarily taking the highest rated card especially in terms of like the bench positions but more so a higher rated card that will help either improve your defense midfield or attack so say you had an average of 495 rated cards um, in the midfield then your rating is going to be 95 rated. If that's what they all add up to, so you add up the four numbers divided by four, and that's what your rating would be. So there is also the question of, does it include your bench and reserve cards? Is it cards that are in actual midfielder spots? Or is it cards that have a midfielder sort of base position on the card? So say Forlan, he's a base striker, but there is some cards like Kai Havertz, you can play him in midfield, but he would class it as an attacker. So there's still a lot of questions around it. I don't know if it's been fully answered yet, but in short, the idea right now is pretty much just go for something that will help improve each sort of set of positions, either midfield, attack or defence, rather than necessarily going for get all the 99 rated cards you can in a team because it might work out better taking something else. So we'll keep that in mind as we're building drafts. As I say, I don't know if it's definitely going to be a real thing or definitely a case of we know 100% this works or it doesn't work, but it's a theory, worst case scenario, that could help us out. 
Now, what also will help us out is a 98 Saliba. 97 Tadebo would be nice in the next pick if EA could give it to us. Instead, we're going to get 95 King again. Now, this draft is looking very good. The attack, we're seeing Gonzalez and um, Forlan, who obviously we've not seen those cards before in draft as well. We hardly saw John Stones. We've hardly seen Saliba. So it looks like not only are EA adding more cards into rotation and adding the SBC cards in, but they also seem to be adding in a lot of the top, top tier cards, which could mean that especially this week, a 1-3-0 could be on. Now, we are going to lose a bit of chemistry if we do take out um, Van Nistelrooy. However, we're already at a 95 rated team, which is very good for us. If we could keep it this way, that would be fantastic. We need a 97 rated team, obviously, for the 130. So now more than ever, it seems very much likely that we would be able to achieve the uh, 130 draft. When we originally sort of finished the 129, this was more of a case of, right, well, we need a challenge to do to last us to the end of the year. Is it going to be actually possible? Probably not, but we'll give it a go to see if we can at least build another 129 throughout all of this. But, as I say, it does seem to be a case of EA are putting a lot of, not only sort of new cards in terms of all the footies and stuff, but a lot of cards you don't see in drafts, plus the SBCs. Obviously, a lot of them are high rated. A lot of these picks don't seem to be too bad either. So, I would actually say we've got a very good chance. 97 Yaya Torre. That is a fantastic card to get our hands on. Um, in terms of the bench, we're at a 127 so far. The bench is definitely letting us down in terms of average rating, um, which is not so great. Also, we've got obviously league um, and club um, changes for any sort of transfer cards as well. So, bearing that in mind, we could see obviously a few of those high rated cards, the likes of a 99 Delict technically is going to be in draft so that could be an interesting card if we do get hold of him 98 Forlan is another card that is brand new um sorry not 98 Forlan 98 Raul replaces Forlan he is obviously a new SPC card that we've had recently as well but that does mean that we are going to finish on a 128 again the back line strong the midfield's okay the front line is actually pretty good the bench is very poor though and I think that might be where we're letting down in some of the rating uh, we can obviously get a little bit more in terms of on the team but if we look at an average in terms of what each sort of position defense midfield and attack is saying a lot of them are a lot high rated so I think this must be an average between not only the players on the pitch but also on the bench and reserves maybe one day I'll try and work it out over the next day or two who knows but for the time being that is draft number two at a 128. Let's at least see if we can get a 129 today in the third and final attempt. And so into the third and final attempt for today's draft, seeing if we can get that 130. We are going to take. I feel like taking the 343 flat again. It was a good formation last time. It could be good again. Now, a team that I just faced there had 99 Fodderingham, um, which obviously clearly shows that he's in available as well. I'm going to take Alan Shearer just because he's the best card there and also other cards have much better cards. It's really weird right now in draft because some of the picks are giving us sort of like half decent cards. And it's like you're normally your bad picks like this still pay out with some all right cards. But again, I have never seen this Fowler card in draft at any point in any time we've done it. So. You can tell that EA have absolutely changed the rotation, but the amount of top tier cards like 98 Ronaldinho that are available to us is just so good. And if this is what draft can be like at the end of the year, then it just makes it a little bit more fun to play it. Um, it's just, yeah, the gameplay isn't so great right now. And I know a lot of people aren't really interested in the gameplay. Personally, myself, I'm not that interested either. Um, some of the games I'll play if it's super easy, but then other games, like the one that I just did there, I just quit 1-0 because I was bored after five minutes and was like, okay, I just want to sort of get into another game. So I think a lot of people are in a similar situation, um, which is kind of no shock. The start of this draft isn't great, I can't lie, but we can get full chemistry on it. Well, full chemistry. We can get the most chemistry out of it um, if we swap Shearer around. 
Marcel Desailly is not a bad option at all. He can go in instead of Germa. Obviously, she has that 94-80 card, but out of the options that we have there, it's better to take her. Um, we can go ahead and take Roberto Carlos. Shira comes out the team, and we can go ahead and swap it around like so. So again, is that a card technically that's in the midfield for rating, or is it classed as a defender because that's what he came out as? It's going to be interesting to see if we can actually work it out and also then work it out for next year so that we know when we're building drafts next year how rating actually works. But again, until that point, it's just a guessing game. We've got two midfielders on two chem points. Everybody else is on four chem. So we could do with changing them around if we can at some point, um, especially taking out the 87 rated because that is not quite going to help us. We'll take a 92 Zanetti, not his best version, but it is now full chemistry on Ferguson. It is still a 94-rated team. Um, a 75-rated goalkeeper is not going to help us out at all there. But anyway, we've got five cards to take. We are going to get 97 Ronaldo, another card you hardly see in draft. I have a feeling we won't get chem. Yeah, we'll lose the chemistry on Ferguson for now. However, to get a 97-rated in the team, it's kind of worth it. Now, on average, to build a 97-rated team, if we know, go off what we know we need for a 99-rated team, it's basically... A full team and bench of 99s and 198 rated need in it. So a 97 rated team, you're going to need to have like at least three or four 99 rated cards plus a load of 98s, majority 97s, and then a bench with no less than like a 94 rated on it. It's going to be difficult to do, but I've got a bit of faith that it is going to be possible. I'm just going to swap Risa around for Ferguson purely for chemistry as much as obviously... Ferguson's higher rated than Zanetti. It's one of them. We need the chemistry more than anything to finish off this draft. But yeah, I am excited in a way to continue grinding draft. There's actually a reason to log on and play this game mode right now. As you could tell for the last few weeks, I've hardly touched this game mode and I've hardly done a video on it. So the fact that we can get pretty much minimums of 1 to 8 every single time with very, very, very good start in 11s. It's not obviously like elite tier. It's not what everybody's sort of running in the teams. And it's another reason why draft is a little bit behind the power curve because, I mean, as we all know, it's never going to be as good as your main team. If you look at this, most people have a minimum 97 rated centre backs, if not 98. Everybody's got at least two or three 99 midfielders and everybody's attack is pretty much filled out with just 99 rated cards right now. So again, cards that are still behind the power curve, but... It's something extra. It's something as a bonus for draft. What we'll do is we'll quit out this game. We'll go and open some of the packs, obviously, to show you what you can get in some of your draft objectives. Hopefully, in the next episode, we'll see if we can get all of the draft rewards done by then um, and have a few bonus packs for us to open. But I don't know what we're going to do for draft this week. I think there will be a few videos where possibly we do maybe like an SBC only draft where we have to take every single SBC card that pops which could be really good and um, we can see what rating team we can get with that we'll also do the most 99 rated cards in a draft still carrying on with the 130 attempt especially as well to try and get that complete now as you can see people's drafts right now there we go 99 sour a really good card in there 97 cantonar but then also like a gold card still mixed in so draft never fails to amuse you or never fails to shock you um, what I will be doing though is giving away the gold because why not? It helps somebody else out, although they might not be kicking off. Um, but yeah, it helps somebody else out. It means that they can get the objective done quicker. And especially if you've done the objective and you know you're like, right, okay, well I don't need to play draft anymore, so that's absolutely fine. I'll just go into games and quit. Just make sure you let the opponent win, uh, unless they celebrate on you. And then to be honest with you, at that point, yeah, it's fair game. So there we go. Draft is done. Obviously, if you're paying for drafts, you're not making back your coins. But because of the free token every day from the SBC, along with obviously a few free tokens from doing the objectives, I would say an average player, you can probably get two wins per draft. You only need about four or five tokens for it. By the end of the week, you'll be absolutely fine to do it. So we've done play four and win five. So we need to do five more games to play and we need to do three more wins which is fantastic obviously we'll then start claiming the cards as well now again mendy and palmer aren't really going to be getting into your team right now but again it's ea 
it's no shock that they're releasing this sort of content. It's a little bit behind the power curve. Footies has been a little bit disappointing, in all honesty, because we all kind of expect to get the best of the best. And last year, we were getting the likes of a 99 Jude Bellingham, who had transferred, obviously, to Real Madrid. And that was the SBC. Whereas now, we're getting, like, a Romeo SBC, 97 rated. Nobody's going to use them at all. So, yeah. A little bit disappointing with that, but what sort of packs do we have to open from this? We've got 85 times threes, 85 times fours. There's an 83 times 10. We are going to get a footies in one of these packs. It's going to be, hang on, please be David Beckham. Oh, it's Steven Gerrard. A David Beckham double walkout would have been fantastic. However, it is going to be a 95 Rickon. I have a feeling that these are both duplicates along with Rivaldo. So, to continue on the grind that I'm obviously doing, like everybody is doing to get a 99 rated team, I'm obviously going to deal with these duplicates. But let me know down below, are you going to be completing the brand new objective for draft? Have you had anything good so far in draft? What has been your best rating? For now, that's where we're going to leave it for today, guys. I'm out. Peace.